and deliver me from evil. I also recognize, Lord, in this world that there really is evil. There are people out there, there is demons and Satan who just want to cause chaos and evil. And they are stronger than I am, Lord, but they're not stronger than you. Lord, do not lead me into temptation and keep me from evil. I need your help, Lord, in this world. Not only do I need my daily bread, but I need strength against sin, and I need strength and courage against evil, because I am weak. Jesus said to his disciples, when you pray, pray this way. Now the awesome news. Jesus said, until now, in that day, you will not ask me for anything. That day is after he has died and resurrected, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He says, you will not ask me for anything. You will ask the Father. Whatever you ask in my name will be done for you. That your joy may be full. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. You see, the Brian who grew up saying prayers as though he was paying tickets to fines, going to the dentist or whatever, had never in his life made the connection between prayer and joy. Have you ever made that connection? God has set up an avenue. Goodbye. Goodbye. And stroke church, whereby we have needs. Needs to resist temptation, daily bread needs, needs for forgiveness, etc., etc. You have needs, right? And he says, ask whatever you ask in my name, you will receive that your joy may be full. So guess what happens? I start to pray with a pure heart, an honest heart, not a perfect person, just an honest heart. And God hears my prayers. And he answers my prayers. And often he answers them way better than you expect. Because God likes to surprise you. We ask for a job and he gives us a job and it's just like that. He answers your prayers, but guess what happens? Your joy goes through the roof. That ever happened to you? Mm -hmm. Have you ever really prayed and cried out to God, and then one day the answer came, and you went, ah! you have to call all your friends, and you never get to what just happened. I've been praying about this, and praying about this, and God answered, and your joy is through the roof. And God wants you to have that. But you see, if he didn't leave you in that place where you had a need, and then you asked for it, you would never have had that joy, right? God wants you to have so much joy for ridiculous. And so he, he knows we're here, and you see the rest of the world gets to look and go, what's he so happy about? What's he so happy about? Well, I ask God for this and this because I need him, and I need this, and I need help, and he answered, and he came through, and he blew my socks off, and that's why I'm so happy. And you see, you just become this walking, talking, joy machine testimony where people see the light. And let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify him who is in heaven. See, that's what's happening. You're giving all the glory to God because, you know, I got on my knees in the little room and I just told him who I was and I asked for forgiveness and I asked for my needs. And lo and behold, sometimes before I even got out of the closet, the prayer was answered. Hallelujah. God is awesome. And you come to church next Sunday and you're just praising it. You're not having a hard time singing whatever songs you sing because your joy is complete. Isn't that what Christianity is supposed to be? Guess what? Too? On Father's Day, we all have this awesome heavenly Father. This is hard. So the one thing of a prayer is it cost God the life of His Son that you can have that relationship with Him. So He's saying, in that day, you won't be asking me for anything. I'm opening the door to our heavenly Father wants to bless you with everything. He wants to bless you with joy, with peace, with forgiveness, with wisdom, with hope, with stuff, all the stuff that you need. He wants to open the doors of heaven to you, and his own son had to stretch out his hands on the cross and be pummeled to death so you and I can have that. That's who he is. Isn't that amazing? And the first thing he wants to give you is you're not saved. You're not saved here today if you don't know who God you get on your knees and say, Lord, just forgive me all my sins and save me, God will cleanse you of all your sins instantaneously, and he promises you eternal life forever. That's how good he is. And he has paid the price for it.
until now you have asked nothing in my name, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. You see, prayer is this awesome, positive thing when you look in God's word and you get away from religion and saying your prayers and paying tickets and all that sort of stuff. Prayer is this wonderful, awesome thing. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is Ephesians 3.22. It is, to him, God, Father, who is able to do abundantly, exceedingly, far more than you can ask or imagine. What an awesome description. He is able to do abundantly, exceedingly, far more than you can ask or imagine. Ask. Keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking about everything. Knock and keep on knocking. The door is wide open. And he is much better than you think he is. Much better. And he wants to reveal himself so that you will see how good he really is. He will Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Well, if you come to him in prayer, you will taste, I promise you. You will receive and your joy will be full. Isn't that amazing? If you're not happy here today, if you're not full of joy or anything, maybe it's because you haven't prayed. Maybe it's because you haven't been calling out on the Lord. Another shocking, last shocking verse that I came across in this whole process is James says, You have not because you ask not. You ask not. Isn't that insane? I went banging my head off the wall after I read that again and again thinking, I am a moron. <laughs> there are things missing from my life because I haven't asked. God wants to bless you, but you don't have them because you don't have the faith to ask. Or your heart is not in the right place. So if I could grab 20-year-old Brian's head for one minute, I would say to him, Brian, do this one thing. Don't be a moron. Pray. Every day. Ask, ask, ask. Don't stop asking. God is far better than you think he is. Do you know what my life would have been like for the last 30 years if I had done that? And yours would be the same. I would have been wiser. I would have sinned less as it would have kept from temptation. I would have had more joy. I would have had more peace. I would have made less stupid decisions. Because I would have included him. My life would be just better overall if I just prayed. How much does it cost? How much does God charge us to pray? It's it like a tax. He has opened the gates for free. It's cost him the life of his own son. The last person I'm going to give you, as the Bible says, to him, how will he not give us all things? He who has given us his only begotten son. That's what's available to you on Father's Day. Every day. That's the Father we all have. And thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ, we have perfect access to him. The Bible says, we have peace with God. Through, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God, through whom also we have access. You have access to the God of the universe. Little you, you may think you're insignificant. You may think you're not important. You may only be a nanny or clean toilets or cook grass or whatever it is. But God thinks you're super important. You're so important, he gave his son to die for you. He has a number of the hairs in your head, and he wants to bless you with all the good things. Whatever you do, don't be stupid like 20-year-old Brian. Be smart like 50-year-old Brian. Just start praying more all day, every day with joy, that your joy may be full. And that would be a good day. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for who you are and for your amazing love for us that you want to bless us with so much, even though it cost you so much. Lord, I pray for the fathers who are here. I pray and ask, Lord, you would help them, you would encourage them, you would give them wisdom and strength, you would fill their hearts with love and compassion for their wives and for their children. Lord, you would bless their homes. Lord, I pray, too, that we would, that by your Holy Spirit, be refreshed and renewed and reminded, especially me, Lord, each and every day, that we who are lazy or faithless or whatever it is, Lord, is hindering us from reaching out to you. Lord, help us to reach out to you. The Bible says we should pray without ceasing. Lord, that we may see you and know you, that we may receive answers to our needs, and that our joy may be full, Lord, that we may give you all the praise and all the glory. 
and it's in his precious and holy name, in the name of your son Jesus we ask. Amen.